Ladies and gentlemen, Virginians have long been leaders. In American history, we, we know of many examples of Virginia leading the way. Tonight, I want to introduce Chairman Jerry Connolly. Chairman Connolly is the chairman of the Fairfax Board of Supervisors. Chairman Connolly has worked with the Sierra Club and several other large counties across the nation to launch the Cool Cities Initiative to create a template for local governments to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. A number of cool county strategies are already underway in Fairfax, including the purchase of hybrid fleet vehicles, the promotion of public and private green buildings, the purchase of 5.8 million kilowatt hours of wind power, the purchase of 3,200 acres of land for conservation and tree planting, and incentives for private sector energy conservation, like the goal of 20% of the Fairfax workforce teleworking once a week. The National Association of Counties presented Fairfax County with an award in 2006 for their 20-year environmental agenda and environmental improvement program, adopted, which was adopted by the Board of Supervisors in July 2004 as part of Chairman Connolly's six-point agenda. With the lack of leadership in federal government, a lot of grassroots organizations like the Sierra Club and Chesapeake Climate Action Network are looking to and counting on local government and state government. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, please welcome Chairman Jerry Connolly. Thank you. That's too fancy for me. You know, uh, being in local government keeps you humble. My daughter was uh, in the fourth grade and I was asked I was a member of the Board of Supervisors and I was asked to come and speak to a fourth grade about the difference between federal, state, and local government. I gave a stem winder of a speech to that fourth grade. <laughs> I talked to them about Virginia's Dillon Rule. I talked to them about the delicate balance between taxation and the provision of services. I talked to them about the growing cultural divide between Northern Virginia and the rest of Virginia. And I, got, and I wound up with great panache. And I get very polite applause from that way. <laughs> with one exception, there was one little girl with her arms that came out a big scowl on her face. And I went up to her and I said, you, you didn't like my talk? She went, no, I thought it was boring. <laughs> my daughter could see the stricken look in my face, so to comfort me, she came running up and said, oh, Dad, don't listen to her. She just repeats what everyone else says. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but, you know, we have an interesting situation in the United States, and, and Mike Tidwell talked about it. We have, a, you know, the way he characterized it is we have a national administration that doesn't give a damn. And I'd go further. We actually have a national, it's more pernicious than that. We have a national administration that denies the science of global warming. And also de uh, denies any of the empiricism involving the environment if it can do it. You know, the candidate push Candidate Bush promised that if he got elected in 2000, would actually address the issue of CO2 emissions, remember? And his first EPA administrator, Christy Todd Whitman, the previous governor of New Jersey, naively believed him. <laughs> and so one of the first things she did as the new administrator of EPA was to come up with some CO2 emission standards, and maybe even some measures for reducing CO2, and the, one of the first acts of the newly selected president, uh, Bush, uh, was to actually rescind those regulations. Um, and that's how this administration began on its great environmental journey. And so when you have a national administration that not only doesn't care, but denies the science behind what we're talking about, it has actually had a positive effect. It has forced local and state governments to take a good hard look at this and start to take action. So I wanted to tell you tonight a little bit about what we're doing in one local government that I hope will actually serve as a template for others. Um, when I first uh, ran for this job four years ago, I brought together a group of 20 environmentalists throughout the county and the community, and I said, let's put together a 20-year environmental plan for Fairfax uh, that reverses some of the bad environmental practices of the past and that it comprehensively addresses every aspect of the environment. And we came up with a plan 
um, that uh, address the six major parts of the environment, including solid waste and air quality, water quality, land stewardship. Uh, Don mentioned in the introduction, one of the things we, we're doing is we're asking our park authority to set aside ten, one out of 10 acres in Fairfax County. Now, we're a 400 square mile community. So one out of 10 acres in this 400 square mile community will be parkland in perpetuity. Um, for an urbanizing county, that's an extraordinary feat. And, and by the way, thank you. And um, we're at 9.4 percent, so we have 1,500 acres to go. Anyone got some land? See me after the show. Uh, but we're we're very very serious about doing that. And that plan, I was talking with uh, Todd Smith, and he was talking with some of our people on, on uh, the connector bus route, and he was talking with some other people, I think, at the Department of Public Works. That, what we said, what I said when I became chairman was, we have to break down the traditional stovepipes of government if this is going to work. This has to be a way of looking at the world, not just a plan of action. Because the way government works is, well, I'm in public works and you're the environmental coordinator, so that's, the environment's your job. <coughs> well, no, it's my job too. And I have to start looking at how to, processes, decisions, policies, and their impacts on the environment. Everybody has to do that. Everyone has to do that. And that's what we set out to do with this plan. And the Board of Supervisors it completely empowered the environmental coordinator to work with every agency head to do that. Um, we, 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 in the history of Fairfax County, we've never dedicated a penny on our tax rate for anything. Um, the tax rate currently is 89 cents. Uh, it was $1.23 at that time. And the first decision we made was to dedicate one full penny on stormwater as part of this environmental. Now, in Fairfax, a penny generates 22 million, almost 23 million dollars a year. So over the lifespan of one board, we're going to probably have about 100 million dollars putting into stormwater retrofit, good for our streams, good for water quality, good for uh, the Chesapeake Bay. We've, we have 30 watersheds in Fairfax County. We have, as part of this initiative, where we are launching studies on every single one of those watersheds with an aim for an action plan to improve water quality. Um, we are restoring stream beds, um, and we're, we expanded riparian buffers. So lots going on, likewise in, in air quality. 